Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show this evening. Tonight's guest, we have Darius on the show tonight. Uh, we got a returned citizen uh, from doing a long period of time in, in prison, He's back in society. We want to bring him on today and bring him to the community, to the bedrooms, and to the living rooms of society and let you know who he is. So thank you for coming on the show this evening. I appreciate you inviting me. Thank you. Right, right. You um, you just come home from a long period of time in prison. Um, I've been home about 90 days from um, a 26-year stint in a California State Prison. Right, right. Welcome home. Welcome thank home. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Glad to have you back, man. You know we uh, we uh, you know we we go into this, these these prisons and and we do a period of time, and and I I tell people that. We go into prison and we build, build to ourselves. We change ourselves to who we are now. And in the Department of Corrections, they, they don't do it. We do it. We put the work in. So we want to welcome you home, welcome you back into the community, and, and uh, uh, it's just yours. Right, it's right. all yours. So we want to let society, let the community know who you are. You went to prison for what what crime? Uh, for second degree murder. Second degree, well, uh, second degree of, robbery. Out of what? Out of what? What county? Uh, Los Angeles County. Okay. And we, how old were you when you went to prison? I was 21 years old. 21 years old. So mm -hmm. you spent a little little bit of time in, in prison. Uh, some of your youth. All of my youth. I did from um, 21 to 48. I'm 48 years old now. So I did 26 years. Okay. Okay. A yeah, little bit over 26 years. Okay. Now, uh, where did you start your time at? Old Folsom. Oh, Folsom. That, that was uh, uh, the first prison you went to. How many prisons did you go to? Uh, I probably lost count. I probably went to about at least 10, 11 prisons uh, okay. throughout my incarceration. Okay, okay. And and at the time that you went to prison, this, was this your first time in prison? Yes, this was my first time in prison. So this this was a, a reality check. This, so it was a, a, a real check going into a society where you had never knew anything about, you'd never been part of before. You had to real, real fast in a hurry wake up to something that you didn't know nothing about. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. It was a, yeah, it was a challenge. It was a, a reality check. Uh, you know, you, you come in, you don't know what to expect. You, 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 you know, you try to play the role. You try to put on a mask. Uh, you know, you want to present this, uh, you know, this exterior like you're not afraid of anything, but inside you really don't know what's going on. Right. You really can't trust anyone. Right. Right. Uh, but you gotta uh, figure it out right. as you go. It's like a. No uh, roadmap to it. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't give you a manual coming in. No, no, I don't get a manual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So after, after you left, how long were, were you in Old Folsom? Uh, I was in Old in, in Old Folsom. When I got there, I got there in about '91. Where I, right when they was closing it down, it was opened up the, the new prisons, Calipatra and um, Pelican Bay had opened up, and they was opening Calipatra. So we opened up Calipatra after that. So I was in Old Folsom for maybe a little over a year, year okay. and a half. Okay, then you, you went to, to Calipat. Yeah, I went to Calipat, yeah. opened up Calipat. How, how long were you there? I was up there for a couple of years. Okay, and you went to, from Calipat, you went to? Old Corcoran. Old, and that's old, where, old Corcoran. Yeah, okay. that's when it, uh, yeah. that's where you get, that's where I, yeah. that's where it got <laughs> sticky at. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I, I, remember, I remember Corcoran when they had the, the, the north and the south, and they used to have the bed on the, on the shoe, the shoe yard over there. And that's when I was yeah. there. I yeah. was actually in the shoe program when all that was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. I did four four left down there. Yeah. You know what I'm so yeah, yeah. It, it was rock and roll down there. B yard four left, yeah, four yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so anyway, so you left from 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 Cor Corcoran, and you went where? Uh, uh Pleasant Valley. Went to Pleasant Valley. Yeah. Okay. I went there thinking I was going to be able to uh you know get some trades, because that's what the parole board had ref uh you know had recommended that I do get some trades. But uh, I went down there and I uh, seemed like. Uh, I got in more trouble with all, that. All over again. All over again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to, you know, when you go into prison, you don't know what to expect. You go into something that is, that's foreign to you, right. you know, and you go into an environment where you, you think things might be mellow, but, you know, like you say, every day is a, is a, is a call. You don't know what to, what, what's going to happen. Leaving out your prison cell in the morning, you got to put that mask on. You got to put know. that mask yeah, on. You got to put that mask you on. Never, uh, you don't want to be exposed. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you don't want nobody to know who you really are. Right, you exactly, know? exactly. So you, you did a uh, 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 um, amount of time at level threes. I did a lot of time on level three yard. Okay, okay. And then you, how long did it take you to get down to level two? I wouldn't have never went to level two had they not changed the laws. They changed the law in um, I think 2012. They right. changed the law where they changed the point system. 
and that I was a permanent level three, permanent okay. 28, but when they changed the law, that allowed me to become a level two, so I, I went to a level two, uh, 2013. You went down to 19? I went down to 19. Right, right, yeah. okay, okay. And you went, you went, what prison did you go to then? Uh, Sad F, that's the only level two I've ever been to, mm -hmm. uh, and I paroled for, I ended up paroling from there. That okay. was a game changer right there. Okay, okay, so you start, you was able to start putting in work, start being programs mm -hmm. to, to try to get your freedom back. And, and you, you started in your NA and AA and then program? Well, CBT, actually, cognitive uh, behavior therapy, but really uh, flipped the script for me. Right. Uh, got, it, got me going, you okay. know? So I had to learn um, what my belief systems were, mm -hmm. how my belief systems is what caused me to uh, make the decisions that I made, mm -hmm. uh, my values, and I had to restructure myself and reinvent myself, and um, I had to uh, adapt to some more socially acceptable values um, that would be um, you know, feasible here in society. Mm -hmm. You know, because coming in, come, you know, in prison, the, the values you have out here, they don't fit completely in different. prison. Completely different. They're completely different. Yeah. So yeah. I had to, uh, I had to adapt. I had to change my values. I had to restructure myself, and I had to change my belief system. Basically, I had to get rid of the, the mentality of uh, my values, where it was a uh, sex, violence, money, murder, gangs, right. fast cars, fast life. And I had to adapt values like, uh, you know, the sanctity of human life. I had right. a community. Uh, family, education, service, civil service, including law enforcement and military. Right. I had to start valuing those things. I had to look at uh, how those things play a part in the community out mm -hmm. here in society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 before you came to prison, were you, were you, were you, were you in, in, hooked up when you came to prison? Were you in any games when you came to prison? Yes, I was a part of a street gang. I was part of the Crips in okay. Los Angeles. Okay. And you, how long did it take, <laughs> how long did it take you to realize that that wasn't something that you wanted to be part of well, after, after you got in prison? I mean, I saw it immediately. However, I was already in too deep. I was in over my head. Right, right. Uh, I couldn't see a way out. I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't find my way out. I didn't figure out a way out until about, actually about 2011, 2012, mm -hmm. years later, mm -hmm. well deep into my 40s, like into my mid 40s. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I started seeing the hypocrisy. I, I, I had already saw it, but I started, Finally had enough courage and enough gumption to stand up for myself and say, you know what? I went out to the yard and told these guys, you know, you guys got to call me by my real name. Call me by my name. I'm done with this. Right. And um, I also went to ISU, to the Goon Squad, and to the administration, let them know I'm done with this and put mine on paper. Right. Right. Not just, you know, with the prisoners, but also went to the administration and put, put it on paper. Right. Right. They asked me that I need to be rehoused, would I want to go asking why, anything like that. I said, no, I don't need all that. I didn't need any of that. Right. I mean, the guys, you know, blacks, and then when it comes to the black gangs, uh, it's a little bit different from the Hispanics and the white gangs. A lot different. Yeah. <laughs> a lot different, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's, that's good. That's good. You, uh, like I said, it, it, you know, we, we going into this, to the system during time, a lot of people go in and they realize that one day I'm going to be released. I'm going home one day. Hmm. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to go home the same way I came in. But the majority of people go in and say, well, I got to go home different. From when I came in, I got to go home to get something back to my community. When I get there, you well, know, you know that's uh, that didn't happen with me um, like that. I I didn't I never thought of getting out. Mm -hmm. I thought I wasn't going to get out. Mm -hmm. So my whole mind frame was like, you know, I'm here. I live here. This is my home. Uh, I'm gonna live here like it's my home. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm 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 foregoing all the rules and regulations. I'm foregoing the safety and security of the institution. None of that matters to me. Right. right. Um, I'm gonna live. I'm gonna live my life on my terms in this prison. That's why I was getting in so much trouble. So I did so many shoe programs. That's why I was always in asset administrative segregation. Uh, I did what I needed to do. I thought to survive, to be a man in there, to make, uh, to have that prison prestige. Mm -hmm. That's all I cared about was my image. Right, right. right. That's all I had. Right, right. was my reputation. Uh, okay, now, now I'm gonna ask you another question. How long did it take <clears throat> you to realize that that wasn't it? Um. I'm telling you, it didn't hit me. It hit me like a water balloon, like a wet balloon, like um, in 2000, about 2012. Mm -hmm. Just really re here recently. Mm -hmm. It's like 2016 now, so 2012, just four years ago, um, a word came up, came upon me. I read a psych report. I went to a psychologist, mm -hmm. and um, the psych dubbed me antisocial. Said I had antisocial traits, antisocial characteristics. Let me ask you a question. Did you know what that meant? I had no idea what that meant. Okay. And all the other times I had, I refused to go to the psych over my, over the, over my period of time in prison. I went once, <coughs> and I refused to go back. 
because the psych had made some determinations that I didn't agree with. Later on, that I realized the psych was actually right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't know what antisocial meant. I thought it meant that I don't talk to this guy, I don't talk to that right, guy. Right. But later on, I learned that it means you have a pervasive disregard exactly. to violate other people's rights, other people's property, blah, blah, blah. You know, And I realized it meant that I was reckless and I had no remorse. That basically, I was a criminal. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that mattered to me was my profit and my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, it was on point. Yeah. And that's what caused the change in me. When I saw that, I was like, oh. Right, right. <laughs> These people think I'm crazy. Right. They're right. not going to let me out of prison, ever. Right. And um, so I, you know, I delved into self-help, and I found out uh, what I could do about that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I learned about CBT, mm -hmm. Cognitive Behavior Therapy, and it helps you restructure. Well, it's basically about uh, behavior modification. Right. Uh, right. Thinking. Right. Getting rid of those irrational thoughts in place, replace them with more rational thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what I got deep into it real hard. And um Changed my life, changed my world, changed my thinking. Right. That, you know, that going in front of the Board of Prison Terms and, the, and, and having that psych evaluation, when that psych evaluation comes back, it has that in the psych evaluation. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people look at psych evaluation when they put it up on the, up, up on the bunk. I, I did the exact same thing. Yeah, they they the bunk. yeah, you know, they, they don't want to hear it, and, and they think exactly what you just said, you know, that you can't get along with uh, Tom, Dick, or Harry, but it don't mean that. Right, and they put a bunch of the bunk because they say, "Well, yeah, I get along with my body, y'all. We kick and whatever." But it doesn't mean that. A lot of people don't know what it means. They don't understand the and jargon. Exactly, and they go in front of the board of prison terms year after year after year after year, and they don't address that because until you address that, mm -hmm. they're not gonna let you go. Until you find out what you what 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 what, what you are, what the, what it means, and you can address that in front of a board of prison terms, you can you can talk about that. But they're not gonna let you go. Yeah, you can't articulate it. Right. You're gonna be stuck in this. And what I do now, I send um, I send books and relapse prevention plans. I send things like that back to prison to inmates, to guys that I know who I know that's still on these level fours and on these level three prison yards, who don't know. Right. Because if I didn't know, I know they don't know. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know. So when I when I when I send it back in and when I talk to these guys, I mean it opens their mind. It right. opened my mind. I'm just hoping it opens some of theirs exactly, too. Exactly. Exactly. Now now you came home. Just recently, mm -hmm. what did you have to go into a program coming on? Yeah, I had to go into transitional housing. It was a mandatory six-month program I have to do. Mm -hmm. So I checked into Health Right 360, right. and uh, I've been there since I've been home. Okay. Now that's part of the requirement, the board of prison, the requirement that you have mm -hmm. to go into transitional housing. If you have 20 years or over in the system, you got to go into transitional housing. And what do you think the transitional housing is, is doing for you? Well, I think it was it helped me assimilate into the uh, society, into the community. I think it does done me well. It, it helped me slow down. It helped me look around and see what I needed. Because it would have been kind of hard for me just to get out after 26 years and just mm -hmm. walk into the house with my family. Right. You know what I mean? Or walk into someone's house. You know what right. I mean? And uh, so I, it was able, I was able to slow down, get my driver, get my license, get my uh, IDs, get my Social Security card, get Medi-Cal. Uh, get on aid or whatever I needed, uh, right. check into school, right. all these things. You know, it's a more of a structured program. Right. You have a curfew initially. Now um, I'm at the point I'm over here at Treasure Island. I really don't have a curfew like that. Um, right. I've been out a little while now. Uh, you know, you know, I've uh, uh, acclimated into the community a little bit better. So right. uh, I'm doing pretty good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Now, now, you when you first came home, it was like. You, you did the 24 years or 26 years in prison. Uh -huh. you, you feel that, nah, I ain't supposed to be in this program. I ain't supposed to be going to transfer house. I mean, wait, I did my time. I got to go back into another program. Was that part of you, part of you? No, there's a lot of guys that was complaining about that. Me, I was just happy to be out. Yeah. I, I, I didn't think I was going to get out. See, right. the whole, my whole mind frame is pretty much different from everybody else. Right. Uh, I, didn't, I lost my hope in prison for a long time. I lost hope. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so consequences I didn't care about consequences so because I didn't have no hope so I consequences didn't matter to me I do what I needed to do to live it didn't matter if I go to hoe if I had to uh, use somebody if I had to use the people in my family mm -hmm. to get what I wanted in prison mm -hmm. whatever whatever it is I was doing in there mm -hmm. that's what I was doing right. I was a manipulator I was deceiving people right. and um that's what I did right. Right. Uh, so my mind frame when I came home was uh I was I just wanted sidewalks and yeah. blue skies. Yeah. I was happy. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. So every day is a holiday. I tell them there all the time. Go. There you go. That's right. I'm happy That's to right. be here. That's right. We have to be appreciative of what we have. Like you say, a lot of people 
uh, 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 got in mind that they're not never coming home. A lot of people are not, not never going to come home. Well, you don't even try after a while. Exactly. I mean, you, but uh, the door is open right now. They, they've been... Um, right open. I mean, if you can come in there and you can articulate yourself and you can um, show them not what you did, but why you did it, if you mm -hmm. can do a little uh, psychoanalyst back to your past and show and talk a little bit about your parents, your family, how you got where you are, mm -hmm. you know, because that's where it comes from, your social development, mm -hmm. how I ended up the way I was. Right, right. And, I, and I turned a blind eye to that for a long time because I couldn't throw my mom under the bus. I couldn't mm -hmm. let them talk bad about my mother. Mm -hmm. I love my mother, I love my father, but it was just, it was the way they raised me because it's actually some, to some degree, it does start in the home. Right, right, right. And, um, right. you know, I didn't come from the most, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. came from a pretty dysfunctional background. Right. Okay, so you went into the system. You did the, and I use the word metamorphosis. You changed from who you were to who you are now. You did the complete change. You educated mm -hmm. yourself. You rehabilitated yourself. And you came on who you are now. Right. right. So society have to know that, you know, we do change. A lot of people go into the system. They go out there and the weight power when they had had iron and dried iron. Now they got the monkey bars. Go out there and get the monkey bars and, and get get toned or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and that's what a lot of people do. But a lot of people get educated. Right. A lot of people go in there and use prison the way they should be used instead of letting prison use them. You know. And that's what a, a, the majority of lifers does in in the system. They go on in the system and they do the metamorphosis. They come home and now you're home. Now you're going through the uh, uh, the, the briefing process of getting back into society, you know, leaving prison behind, and you're part of this world now out here, and you, you, you making amends, right? You're giving back now, you're going to school, you're getting educated, you know. Yeah. So, give give us a little a little of that. Well, um, for me, uh, I am going to school. I'm I'm, I'm over here. Uh, I'm over here at the San Francisco State with Jason Bell, and uh, Curtis Penn at the Project Rebound, mm -hmm. and. Um, they, they allowed me to go to San Francisco State, so uh, I'm uh, in my junior year over here. Uh, I'm also um, studying to be a, a certified drug and alcohol counselor, so I'm about 48 hours out from uh, completing my certification, along with my bachelor's degree with, uh, in um, social work. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to bring those two together and um, see what I can do with it, see if uh, you know, I can be of assistance. And uh, I just try to keep living you know, from a victim-centric standpoint, uh, point of view, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I mm -hmm. just remember what I did, remember where I've been. Right. Uh, you know, I, I go out there on Saturdays, every other Saturday I'm over and in Oakland uh, with Elaine Brown. Elaine Brown, right. With Elaine Brown, and um, you know, we feed, we, we, you know, we work with the homeless, we feed the homeless, we grow um, vegetables and, you know, tomatoes and, and things like that, and we pass out food and things like that to the homeless. Mm -hmm. I get out there and I plant, and, you know, and I, and I pull up, you know, right, weeds right, and right, right. pull up the tomatoes and the greens. Uh, I'm kind of enjoying it though, you know, I, I you know, just yeah. see me plant some greens right. and, they and then grow. they grow and then right. I actually hand it out and feed right. somebody, yeah. you know, yeah. if I've yeah, never. Yeah, Elaine Brown, she has a good, a good, a good thing going over there. She's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. It's, it's, uh, and she's trying to do a lot. She's yeah. trying to do a lot for yeah. formerly incarcerated. Yes. You know, so yeah. is, um, you know, it's a few other programs that's uh, trying to do some things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All of us are nuns. Right. Uh, do, 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 do I see nuns? Yeah, do right. I see nuns. You got Jerry Elster over there. Mm -hmm. With a family, <coughs> uh, family service committee, the mm -hmm. family committee, you know, they doing their thing. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so now you're into the, uh, to the, uh, the education uh, uh, process here out out in society, out in the, well, the free world on this side of the fence. Mm -hmm. You're educating yourself to become a drug alcohol counselor. It's a big demand for that. Right. It's a big demand for that. It's a big calling for that right now because we got a lot of people coming home from prison. That's putting work in. We got a lot of people that's out here in society that not have been to prison, and they and they 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 they, they, they messed up. You know, they really messed up and they need help. You, you know? know, and I look at them too. They victims too. You sure know, so I, I, you know, when it comes to like that, I look at the restorative justice aspect of it. So I'm I, I'm as well a certified victims right advocate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got certified as a victims right advocate. So you know, I'm gonna help those who. Are, you know, the suspects or, or, or the perpetrators of these crimes, but also want to help people uh, find a new normal and live a life after being victimized. Right, right. You know what I mean? So, I, I'm, you know, I'm versed in uh, crisis prevention, uh, right. suicides. Uh, right. I can go out and talk to somebody who's been victimized. or you know, I don't care if I go out and um, um, put the door up that somebody's boyfriend kicked off the hinges mm -hmm. or put up uh, patches on the wall that their boyfriend, you know, socked in a hole in the wall right, or something right. or just take a woman to court 
who's been stalked or whatever. You know, that's I just you know right. still from a victim centric standpoint. Exactly. exactly. And I still look at the perpetrators that's in jail for whatever crimes they committed mm -hmm. as victims. So I want to kind of help them understand why they did what they did. Mm -hmm. You didn't do this for the three hundred dollars or five hundred. Right. You right. robbed somebody. It wasn't for the money. Right. Right. It's something more to why you did that. Mm -hmm. And I want to kind of uh, you know show them um, get into that why they did that. Right on. Right on. That's good, man. That's good. Keep, keep up the good work, man. We need we need we need a, people like you out here. Like I said, we got a lot of people coming home from prison. Brothers just got found suitable last last week in Solano after doing a long period of time. People coming home from prison at a large number right now. Jerry Brown did a good thing. Yeah. You know, he did the SB forty two uh, yeah, in the seventy seventy, I think seventy seven. Yeah. And then and then he back back in office doing doing SB the same 61. thing. He, exactly. Yeah, right doing it again. So so we got the the young, the youngsters, the youth that went to prison, they're getting the shot, they're coming home. So uh, a lot of things happening right now, you know, and the doors are opening and they got people coming home with uh, 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 good things to give back to the community. You know, we was we was kind of part of the, the bad salt in our communities before we went to prison. We went in and things happened after we went in. Now we're home, we're trying to give back, trying to change our communities back to what it should be. So so we, uh, we, we, we're part of that village. You know, right. it takes a village to, to raise a child, it, it does, and we got to be part of that, you know. So we want to commend you for being part of that, that village. You know, you're back in society, you know, you're back to give back to, you, to your community, and we commend you for that, you I know. I definitely appreciate it. You know, we commend you for that. So the work the work continues, it doesn't stop, and we have to continue doing what we're doing because we are, we're here to make a difference, you know, and we can make a difference. So what, what are your future goals? Uh, I'm gonna, uh, my future goals, first and foremost, is, uh, you know, to get certified as a, in counseling. Uh, I'm just right around the corner. I have that in the next, probably next month or so. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, to graduate from college, I might even pursue a master's degree. I'm not. Um, they're prepping me for it down there at the, at the school. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully, and hopefully, um, use use the tools that I've gotten in, in you know, my education to help other people uh, okay. Okay. make a difference and change. And you know, okay. I okay. just want to use it to. Uh, uh, help people grow. Okay. Yep. Now, now, are, are your intentions to stay in the Bay Area or to go back to Southern California? Uh, right as far as of right now, my intentions are to stay here in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I don't have any intentions of going anywhere. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, this That's is good. where I am, and this is uh, my foundation. This is my base where right. I'm networking. Right. Right. And this is where I want to be. I love it out here. Right. Okay. So, okay. Uh, well, like I said, we in the community in the Bay Area, we need people like you in the Bay Area. You know, uh, a lot of people that that watch the show. You know, I always tell people if you see a, a somebody in the community, you know, and and and, and a lot of a lot of people that's been in society have been in prison. A lot of seniors mm -hmm. say that they can tell a, a person that's been in prison for a long period of time opposed to a person that's that's not. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how how that is, but you know, people in in, in the community they say that you know this this person here he's been gone for a while and he just just seeing you for a period of time and saying, well, you've been gone, you, okay, and they can recognize. And they they commend us for being back. I think this it may be because uh, life has come home manner, but we got manners. Exactly. We say excuse me, we say please, we exactly. say thank you, we exactly. say exactly. you know we, we you know we 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 have a a, a mannerism about ourselves. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's that's not that people are really not used to. <coughs> They're not used to it. It's something different that we that we have coming yeah. home. Because you know we 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 went into a system, and uh, our life was taken from us. You know, it was gone. It's over with. Like I said, you didn't think he was coming on. A lot of us didn't think we was coming on. But then it got to the point to where the door opened up a little bit and people started getting dates. So wait a minute. It might, might, might be possible. It might, might happen. We started doing things to get closer to that door. And, and, and it got closer to the door and we got snatched out. So people start doing the right things in prison and starting programs and doing things that, they was, that made sense opposed to something that didn't make sense. And we got snatched out of the door, so we back in this world. We yeah. back to make a difference. Well, the guys in there, they don't even, they don't know their potential. They don't know their self worth. Well, you know. I didn't know mine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would get grades. I was doing community college in prison. I would get an A or a B on my on a test or something on my midterm, and I would ask myself, uh, like, you know, what's wrong with this teacher, this professor? You know, is he drunk or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I have to ask, then I have to tell myself, you know, I read the book, I did the curriculum, you did, you did the work, so I know this. So you did the work. of course I should get the grade I got, but. I've never had praises. I've never, you know, I've never had any uh, type of compliments like that in my life. So I had to learn to be able to accept a good grade or a compliment or a reward. Right. You right, know what I mean? Right. A positive one outside of uh, the gang giving me something for 
you know, fighting or doing something right, right, gang related. Right, right. You did the work. You know? Once you do the work, you get you get the praise for it. Yeah. You know, so 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 now you're back in in the, in the society. You know, you're you're you you have good 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 future intentions. You know, and now the thing about being back in the society now today is that you're part of it, and your decisions that you make, you make them. Right. right, and the only person that can change it is you. Right, right. Opposed to you get up in the morning, put that mask on, and they say, "No yard today." Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you going to the yard, get to the gate, and a melee break out? Right. Get out. Yeah. Then go back to your prison cell. Right. You know, so only person that can say, change our decisions today is us. You know, and that's a good thing. When you wake up in the morning, and say, "Wait a minute, well I'm gonna go to work." No, I ain't going today. I'm gonna call in, and I got. The, or either I got a point, me to, something that you do for yourself, mm -hmm. opposed to somebody doing for you. You know, going to the canteen once a month, first draw, second draw. You know, <laughs> make up. You know, and you can go to Safeway and go on the Safeway and, and, and buy your Snickers bar and eat it. Go to the cash register and, and, and pay for it. Walk outside, and say, wait, I want another one. Go back inside, buy you another Snickers bar, opposed yeah. to going to the canteen once a month. Exactly. About all you can't think for the Yeah, you got you something, know? and the freedom is there. It's, there. it's just what you do with it, and um, exactly. you know, it's it's there. It's there, yeah. It's, yeah. And, you, and, you, and it's surreal because it's you start to feel <laughs> it, you know. Yeah, yeah. You start yeah. to feel it. You start yeah. to go in places. I mean, I I saw a guy on Market Street doing Michael Jackson. I yeah. stopped and watched him do the whole thing. Yeah. I, I yeah. videotaped and yeah. took pictures. Yeah. I even gave him money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was just. Yeah, you know, but this, this, but this is something that we can do today. Yeah. You know, they got. I, I was watching the television yesterday, and they was talking about Fleet Week. Fleet you know, Week. Fleet Week. They got the blue, the, uh, the Blue Angels coming in. Oh, okay, with, yeah. the, with the jets coming in, and they got Fleet Week. They got all these ships coming in. I looked at that for a lot of years on TV. Fleet Week in San Francisco. Wow. And I worked in a shipyard before I went to prison. You know, I worked on ships, right? So I, was, I used to, to see the aircraft carriers or whatever, but it, it was no, never no thing to me. Because I've worked on these ships, I've seen all these stuff happening. Right, right, the little things, right? But when I go to prison, I say, man, look at that. You know, look at the ships coming in, and all these people just come from everywhere just to see these aircraft carriers and these planes and different things. And I said, when I get to the street, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to Fleet Week. So this weekend, I'm going to Fleet Week. Me and my girl, we gonna, I'm going to get up, we're going to go to Fleet Week, we're going to walk around like tourists and enjoy San Francisco. Right, I'm gonna right. do that because I can do that today. Yeah. Cause I'm on this side of the fence, you know. So right. So the so the choices that we make today are our choices on the person that can change the world. And it affects those who are still incarcerated trying to get out. So when you come out here and you do the right thing, exactly. other lives that are still locked away. There's a lot of good people sure, are left behind. Sure, a lot of good people. We're very emotional leaving prison because yeah. I left a lot of uh, good people. But yeah. uh, I do the right thing. They see I'm doing the right, right. thing. It encourages them, motivates them. Exactly. Exactly. You know, Exactly, get on the side of the fence yeah, to make, be able to make their own decisions. Right. So, so yeah, man, this this is great. This is good. Good having you on the show. We wanna, we wanna uh, uh, commend you for the work that you're doing for yourself. And like I say, once you get that paper, it's yours. They can't take it from you. Right. You know, you get that certification, completion, and 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 the California stamp. That's yours. Get that you master's know? degree, get that exactly, master's degree. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. so keep on doing what you're doing, man. Keep on doing the work. For you, that you want to do for you, I tell people we got a black president today. Right. In America, we got a black president. You know, people didn't think that would ever happen, but it happened. We, we're about to get a woman president. It's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah Donald ain't got it. You know, <laughs> you know, we're, gonna, we, we're gonna get a, a woman president. It's never happened before in America. So in America, you can do anything that you want to do in America. You can freedom of speech, say anything you want to say. Right. You know, anything you want to do in America. So. As far as people coming back into society after long times in prison, once you get back on this side of the fence, you get your uh, uh, everything restored to you. You know what I mean? After ten years, you can go out and you get your you can put in for uh, 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 citizens, whatever, whatever it is, it's what's it called? They get your uh, um, your voting rights back and all mm -hmm. this all this back. You get everything back. I can't think of the name of it right now, mm -hmm. but you can get it restored. And everything that you once had before you went to prison, you get all that back. So we continue doing what we're doing for the next 10 years, put in for it and get it back. And we're law by citizens now because we, we're back. We're back with taxpayers. You know, so mm -hmm. continue doing the work that you're doing, be part of this world, and do anything you want to do in the world, man. You know, just keep on giving it back. So we want to commend you for coming on the show today, letting society know who you are, you know, who you once were, what your future goals are, 
and we want to thank the viewers for tuning in this evening, watching the show. Uh, we'll be on every Saturday night at 7 o'clock on Channel 29. Every other Thursday, we have a live show on Channel 76. Uh, call in. Uh, we have showing now. We got a series called "The Good, Bad, and the Ugly." That's going on right now. We got a, a gentleman that was uh, sent to prison for a crime that he didn't do. He was given a life sentence, two life sentences, with the individual that, in fact, did the crime. Didn't know the gentleman, and found out who the gentleman was on an elevator ride in the county jail. He went to prison, did 10 years. The district attorney went back after 10 years and felt he did something that might not be right. Went back, spent his own money to get this man out of prison. They're good friends today. We have the arresting officer that was part of this good, bad, ugly. He arrested these people. They went to prison. Years later, the arresting officer got arrested for murder, did 20 years. Got out, he was on the show. We're going to get the district attorney on that was over this whole triangle on the show. So they tuned for the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, this week, coming on Thursday, we'll have the uh, founder, CEO o over Talif Collective Foundation out of Fremont coming in and telling about the reentry program that I'm part of today. So stay tuned on Thursday at 6.30 on Channel 76, and stay tuned for the good, the bad, the ugly. And we want to thank you, my brother, for coming on this evening and being part of the show. Appreciate thank you. Me to be here. Yes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> so stay tuned for the good, the bad, the ugly, and stay tuned for uh, Thursday at 6.30. Thank you. Have a good evening.